Good evening. I know, but this is just unreasonably large. They, sh they should have spread it out a little bit. We are learning Maseches Ksubo, Staf Kuf Yod Aleph. This Gemara is, um, just as a pregame of, of what we're about to learn, is one of the most provocative Gemaras in regards to the dialogue of Medina Sisral and Zionism and making Aliyah. This Gemara is the centerpiece of this conversation. As we will soon see, the Gemara is extremely difficult to understand, not in the basic understanding, but it's difficult to understand because it's totally not what we would have thought. Let's get started. We'll jump right into a story. We're on the bottom of Kuf Yodam Bay, two lines from the bottom. And the Gemara reads, and we've seen this in Shas before, that Reb Zera avoided Reb Yehuda. Why? Because Reb Zera wanted to move to Eretz Yisrael, to Baal Mesak Eretz Yisrael. Why would Reb Yehuda not hear from it? And this is the line. This is the line that the Sad Rebbe and others quote to say that you're not allowed to, that the Zionism, Zionism is not Judaism. Why? Because of this line. The Gemara says, that if you move, if you move from Babel to Eretz Yisrael, you're doing something wrong. You're going to go to Babel. That's where you're going to be until I redeem you. So who are you to move to Eretz Yisrael? Oh, that's a big problem because we uh, Chicago has one of the highest Aliyah rates in the country, maybe even in the world. And uh, Nefesh ben Nefesh, and people move all the time. Haredim and Siona move all the time to Eretz Yisrael. So what do we do with the Gemara? It's a bit of a say to move to Eretz Yisrael. So says the Gemara, Reb Zera, no. Reb Zera says, Ha'hu b'klishares. See, that Pasuk is talking about the klishares, that the klishares, if they're in Bavel, they can't be moved back to Eretz It's a technical din about the kalim of the Beis HaMikdosh, but it's not minei ubei, it's really not a din in moving to Eretz Yisrael. Reb Yehuda, what would you say? That we learned out from another Pasuk. We learned the klishares from where? And the Pasuk concludes, Asha Techpat. So even if you translate the first Pasuk at the top of the page of Bavela Yuvu Shama, that is talking about klishares, Reb Yehuda says, don't worry, plenty of psukim. And the Pasuk writes, the Pasuk writes that we are talking about uh, the Isra of moving to Eretz Yisrael. Reb Zera, Hahu Shalo Yalu Yisrael Bechoma. This is where the Jews are not allowed to move to Eretz Yisrael, Bechoma. What does it mean, Bechoma? Take a look at Rashi on the top line, at the end of the line. Dibra Hamaskal Shalo Yalu Bechoma, Yachad Biyar Chazaka. To move in as one front, to move in as a movement. That is what the Gemara, according to Reb Zera, seems to be as problematic. So if we stopped right here, Reb Zera would say to move as a movement is problematic. To move as Yachad Biyad Chazokah's problem. You want to go up as one individual? No problem at all. The Isra say of moving is only if you do so as a movement. That's a big problem. The Ramam doesn't quote this Lahalacha in, uh, in Hilchos Malach and Parakeh, which is where all of this is discussed. Let's continue. Rabbi Yehuda, yeah, he's like, I understand what you're saying, and I agree that the Jews can't move up a Choma, but they cannot move up a Choma, and they cannot move up even individually. Why not? Hishpati, Achrinuksi. We have the word Hishpati multiple times in Shira Shirim. I'll just add right here that all of these, these Psukim in Shira Shirim are not Chumash. They're part of Nach and not Chumash. And Dibre Torah and Dibre Kalbon, Loyal Finan. We do not learn out Dine de Oraisa from. From here, so is it a real bit say? How could you say bit say is learned from Shira Shira? I'm not so partial. Anyways, Rabbi Yehuda's more machmer. He has a more broad restriction on moving to Eretz Yisrael, which is uh, both as a movement and as individuals. Rabbi Zera, no, though that pasuk can't come to teach you about individuals because that pasuk is used for something else. First of the very first of the middle width lines. Wow, Hashem should bless us to make it tomorrow tonight. There's just a lot of words here. Let's get going. Ha'humi boile, those words of Ishpati, that's used, Lichad Reb Yossi, Reb Chanina. To Amar, he says, Gimel Shvuos Halalu Lama. We know that there are Gimel Shvuos. What are the three Shvuos? Achash lo Yalu Yisrael B'choma. One is to teach us that the Jews are not allowed to move to Eretz Yisrael as Rashi says, Yachad Biyar Chazaka, as one uh, front. And the Achash, Yakarish Baruch Sheishbiya Karish Baruch Hu, as Yisrael Shalom Yimrdu, Be'umo Sa'olam, that there shouldn't be a massive rebellion. That for whenever it is the case that the Jews are gonna are gonna subjugate are gonna be subjugated by the goyim that the goyim shouldn't overdo it. These were the three shvuos. So therefore, the pasuk that's used to indicate to Rabbi Yehuda that there's a restriction to move even even as an individual. That pasuk is uh, is uh, is already used and it's used for something else. And therefore, Rabbi Zera can still maintain his shita that it's mutter to move. Individually, it's just not mutter to move uh, as a movement. 
And the Gemara this says 10 lines on Rabbi Yehuda. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but still I would say it's usher to move as an individual because im ta'iru im ta'oru ruksi. If another Pasuk in Shir Ashir says the Gemara of Reb Zeru, what would you do about that Pasuk? Well, he says, I'm really sorry, Rabbi Yehuda, but I still want to move to Eretz Yisrael and I can argue through Pesukim that I'm still allowed to as an individual. Why? Because, says the Gemara, really there are six Shavuos. The first three are the ones that we said earlier. The three ones that we said earlier is you can't move up as a movement, that the Jews should not rebel against the nations of the world, and that the nations of the world shouldn't overly subjugate the Jews. Reb Zeira, what does he say? The first three, as we just said, and Enoch, what are the rest? Shelo Yigalu Esakates, that we have an obligation to not share the end of days. If anyone were to be privy to such information, they cannot share it. The Shelo Yirchiku Esakates, want to talk about Musar. Here's our, our, our dose of Musar. You share them on Gideon? Bichlal, Bichlal, we don't share it. That was Yaakov in the Torah that he lost his nevoi. He was about to be Megala Sakate. And then the boys came in. He wasn't able to, Kodesh Baruch Hu pulled the carpet out from under him. We're not allowed to share that information. It changes the way people behave. Then they say, I'll be at Tzaddik later. Uh, why should I be at Tzaddik now? And that's number two. Number two here says, V'shelo yiracha kuesakates. You shouldn't push off the end of days. And how do we push off the end of days? By being a shegetz, by being an avaryan and doing things that are not right. We need to be from. We need to do whatever we can. This is Chabad's Ashkafa. Every mitzvah brings us closer. Afalpi, that it may not be in the context of general growth. I want you to put on tefillin today, shake a lulav. I shared with, with you already. I've been, I was at numerous brises over Sukkis, and there were Chabad rabbis there, a bunch of lulav and menesrogim. Every yid who walked in, are you a yid? Are you a Jew? Are you, oh, come shake the lulav and esrog. Every mitzvah is an advancement toward that end goal of the case. So we have to make sure that we're doing mitzvahs and not doing averos. And then this Gemara is cryptic. Rashi gives us a little bit of insight. But shelo yigalu hasod ovdei kochavim. One should not share the uh, the yisod, the deep stuff. So foundational things with ovdei kochavim. Let's take a look at Rashi on the third line. What are we talking about here? The deep stuff. Third line, halfway through. Dibra maska ba shelo yigalu hasod. Amri lasod ha'ibur. Some say it's simply the mathematical equations of how we determine when a shnas ibur is an ibur yor, I don't know. That's not such a special secret. Uh, we at this point, it's already a pattern. Seven out of every nineteen years, whatever our math game is, the math is already evident to all of us. If we wanted to sit there and figure this, published books on this. So according to this gemara, you would never have been able to publish that book because a goy could get their hands on it. And Rashi says that there's another option also. But Amri la so tamei Torah, giving the deep reasons as to why the Torah was given. <clears throat> In Ashkafa, when we teach Torah to people, when we teach halacha, there's two reasons why we have to keep a particular halacha. The first reason, and really the only real reason, is because Hashem said so. Even if we don't like his reason, it doesn't matter. The love language of the soul is mitzvot. So you want to have permanence in the next world? Great. Go do mitzvot. You don't like the mitzvot? Sorry. That's just the way things work. It's the way the wiring is. But the deeper level, the Tamei mitzvah, sometimes we use at the Sefer HaChinuch is rooted in this. Bishor Sheha Mitzvah, the Tamei HaMitzvah, the, the, the rational explanations of mitzvahs as much as we can understand. They're all irrelevant. They're all irrelevant. We use them as candy for kids, a little bit of sweetness on the tongue. You don't understand the mitzvah of Tzniyas, I could have people, whatever. You can give a svara, but it's a svara kozebes because at the end of the day, the real reason why we keep Torah is singular. Our neshama, only gets permanence by doing mitzvahs, period. End of story, end of conversation. You can argue the 613. It doesn't matter what you feel. These 613 are the only, you don't want to get polio? Take the vaccine. You're anti-vaccine? Get polio. <laughs> this is a very simple math equation. That's how that's how the Torah is structured. So these tamay mitzvahs is a deeper level. Fine. So these, these things are all part of the six. And anyways, this sugya really does kind of end here. And we see this standing machlok as Reb Zeyer and Reb Yehuda. That's why Reb Zeyer kept avoiding Reb Yehuda because Tachlis, at the end of the day, he wanted to move to Eretz Yisrael. But he knew that Reb Yehuda wouldn't agree because Reb Yehuda held more broadly that both as a movement and as an individual, you cannot move. Satmar held like this, even though there are Satmar Hasidim there, but they they lived there already. They weren't moving there. Got, 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 it's a whole tumult. It's a whole big debate. The Cairo Geniza got involved here. There's two versions of the Rambam. There's the Rambam that we have printed. There's another Rambam that's found in the Cairo Geniza that supports the cause of the Zionists. Uh, these are whole debates. One thing I will say about this topic, and I'm not getting into the politics, is that we have to remember when we speak about the differences between Sionim and Haredim and Eretz Yisrael and Medina, we have to remember one thing. This isn't a Hashkafa discussion. This is a halachic discussion about making Aliyah and moving to Eretz Yisrael. Mitzvah Yishu Ba'aretz. We'll see other Gemaras today that seem to go in the face of this and be very strong proponents of moving to Eretz Yisrael. These Gemaras seem simple. They're very difficult to paste together because some of the pieces don't look the same. And we'll see this shortly. But I'm just highlighting that 
the Gemara here may seem glot in one way. It's not a simple Gemara. It requires a lot of research. The Gemara says a, a fifth of the way down, ten lines into the in the middle with lines. But Svakos, oh by Elos Hasadah again a pasuk in Shira Shirim. What does that mean? That uh, we might be the Ayelos of the Sade. So Amar Rebbe Lazar. If you keep my covenant, my promise, in other words, if you keep halacha, mutav givaldik. And if not, if you don't keep halacha, then your your flesh is just as uh, just as available as a hunter can access a deer. So we have to make sure that we're doing our part. Torah's mugging. If we do a good job of keeping halacha as best as we can, we always make mistakes, but as best as we can. As Rabbi Robin said, sometimes it's more about the fight than it is about the victory. Spend the extra five seconds before you fail. Fine, no problem. Good. So that's what the Gemara means over here with this Joshua. And now we see the total flip side. Total flip side. Can we move to Eretz Yisrael? Yes, no, maybe. Then the Gemara says, Amar of Elazar, kol adar Eretz Yisrael, sharif below avon. <laughs> Anyone who lives in Eretz Yisrael. What was the whole debate? Five lines later, you're telling me that if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you have no averas. So what about the Machlokes of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Zera? How do we figure that out? Good question. Rishonim, we need to, we need to dig in. This is not a simple sugya. How do we know that there is no Avon? In Metzias, it can't be. Shana Amar. Uvalya Amar Shekein Chalisi Am Hayoshe Ba Neso Avon. That the neighbors are going to say that we all got ill because of the Neso Avon. The people who are sinners referencing the Jews. And by virtue of the fact that we have no Averas, the Kodesh Baruch Hu structure, that we have no Averas in Eretz Yisrael, so that the Goyim can't say, ah, oh, the Jews are sinners. No, in Eretz Yisrael, you're Shari below Avon. And says the Gemara, that's not necessarily true. That pasuk is only talking about ill people, not referencing Eretz Yisrael, not a raya one way or the other. Amar of Anan, famous, we know that a lot of people like to be buried in Eretz Yisrael. Wow, that is some serious prime real estate. A person who gets buried in Eretz Yisrael, it's as though they're buried under the Mizbech. Where do we get this from? Third of the way down. That you need to make the Mizbech out of earth. That you're going to get Kapar in the Admaso, in the ground, Amo of his nation. Ula have a Ragil to have a Salak Laretz Yisrael. Ula was a regular. He would make uh, trips a few times a year. Part of the Gvir culture. You got to go to Eretz Yisrael a few times a year. So Ula wasn't a Gvir culture kind of guy. He's big time of Chacham. But Ula went to go to Eretz Yisrael to learn Torah. He would go many times a year. Where did he die? Nach Nafshe Bechutz Laharetz. Taka, he died when he was outside of Eretz Yisrael. Asu Amr the Rebbe Lazar. So they told Rebbe Lazar that Ula died in Chutz Laharetz. Amar, and he said, quote, Ant Ula, you, Ula, of all people, you're such an oiv Eretz Yisrael. You go up all the time. Al Adama Tmeya Tamus. How could you possibly die in Chutz Laharetz? So they said back, Amr Ula, they said back to Rebbe Lazar, don't worry. Uh, they said, um, they said, Amrulo, Arono Ba. Don't worry, they're gonna they're gonna put the casket on a plane and they're gonna take him to Eretz Yisrael and bury him there. And then the Gemara says a big yisot. Amar lahem meino dome kol taso mechayim. There is no comparison between someone who was absorbed in the era of, of Eretz Yisrael when they were alive. Le kol taso laachar misa. If you're gonna die, live there before you die. That's a higher level. That level of kedusha is even is even greater. Ugabra, there was a particular person in the Nafla Bechoza. He lived in Eretz Yisrael, but his uh, his brother died, and his wife lived in Bechoza, lived in Bavel. He lived in Eretz Yisrael. So Asa the Dreb Chanina, he went to go ask Ashila, what should I do? Amarle Mahu Lemecha Should I go down to Chutzla Aretz to marry to marry Rachel? My my brother Ruvain died. I'm Shem, and my brother Ruvain died, and I want to marry his. Uh, I want to do Yibu. So uh, says the Gemara, Amar Lei, and the Gemara speaks, Derech Mashal, Achib Nasa Kusis, your brother married a Kusis. What does that mean, a Kusis? It's a reference to the fact that she lives in Chutz Laaretz, because uh, we, as we said yesterday, that's like a person who's uh, Ovei Lavod What? Without a get. Without a get? Yeah, oh, yes, without a god. But here it's referencing Avodas Kochavim because a Kusi is potentially an Ovei Lavod That's what the Gemara is referencing. Anyways, Umeis, and then he died, and then the Gemara says this crazy line. Baruch HaMakom Shaharago. Unbelievable. The guy in Chutzar is blessed be him that he died. Thank you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Very hard to understand this line. But who Yorad Acharav? You think Shimon should go back down and marry Rachel? Are you crazy? Why would you leave Eretz Yisrael? You're not leaving Eretz Yisrael for Yibum. This goes in the face of another Gemara we're familiar with that you're allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael to get married. Maybe that din doesn't apply by Yibum. Fascinating din. Who says? Okay. Then the Gemara says, 
Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Kashem Sha Asr La Tes Merit Israel Bavel, just like it's Asr to leave Israel and to move to Bavel, Kach Asr La Tes Me Bavel Shara Rasas. Oh, Bavel is better than regular Chutzarts. So the highest level is Eretz Yisrael, the second best is Bavel, the third best is everything else. Rabba Virav Yosef, Dharma Chavar, Fidmi Pumpadisa, the Bekubi, even two places within Bavel, you're not allowed to move, stay in Pumpadisa. How do not like me Pumpadisa, the Bekubi, their Taka was a person who moved from Pumpadisa to another place. Shamte Rav Yosef, we put him in Cherem. Yikes. That's not Kishmak. That's not good. And this wasn't even Eretz Yisrael. This was just moving from Pumpadisa to Bekubi. Unbelievable. There was a person who moved from Pumpadisa to another town. Shachiv, the guy dropped dead. Second, he left the city limits. Uh, he hit the ground. If this guy wanted to live, he could have lived. He could have chosen to live. He should have just stayed where he was. Why are you moving? Kodesh Baruch planted you there. Stay. Rabbi Rabbi Yosef, Tarmach Shavar, Ksherin Sheba Bavel. Those who are the Ksherin in Bavel, Eretz Yisrael Kolat Sun. It's as if they've been absorbed in Eretz Yisrael's atmosphere. We'll describe this in a minute. Ksherim Sheba Shara Ratzos. If you have a Kasher who lives in America, not in Bavel, they're they're it's they're like Bavel uh, Kolat Sun. It's as if they live in the airspace of Bavel. What is this talking about? Lemaim. Hilem Ali Yuchsin. If you want to say it's for Yuchsin, well, that's not so simple because the way it's structured over here is that. The people from Bavel who are Ksherim, they're like they're better, they're more like Eretz Yisrael. And the people from outside of Bavel are like Bavel. But the Gemara says that's impossible because really Bavel has better Yichus tracking than Eretz Yisrael. Where do we see this from? Amar Mar, Kola Ratzos. All of the lands are considered Esau to Eretz Yisrael. They're considered like dough. So many ingredients, everything's so confusing. We don't know what does what. It's a strange mashal, but that's what the Gemara says. Eretz Yisrael, but Eretz Yisrael, Yisrael the Bavel. We see here that Bavel has better yichus, even than Eretz Yisrael. So that can't be what this statement of, Abba, of Rabbi of Rabbi Yosef is talking about. Therefore, the Gemara says, you're right, Elul Inyan Kvura. Oh, we're saying that, though, because we said that being buried in Eretz Yisrael is better than being buried anywhere else. So here the hierarchy works. Chutz Laretz is worse than Bavel. Bavel's worse than Eretz Yisrael. Amr Rabbi Yehuda Kol Adar Bavel, last of the middle with lines. Anyone who lives in Bavel, Ki Ilu Dar Eretz Yisrael. Bavel was a very, very lofty level because, as we'll see, there is an equivalence in the pasuk between Sion and Bavel. What does the pasuk say? Hoi Sion Himalti Yosheves Bas Bavel. Oh, we see that Sion and Bavel are considered very similar. First long line. Amr Rabbi Naktinon. We have a tradition. Bavel Lo Chazia Chevli De Mashiach. If you live in Bavel, not subject to the birth pangs of Mashiach. We don't live in Bavel. That would be nice if we did. Tirgama, it's not everywhere. The explanation was Ahutzal de Binyamin. It was a place in Bavel called Hutzal de Binyamin. The Karole Karna de Shezvasa. And they used to refer to this location as the corner of salvation. <laughs> this is the place you want to be. Could you imagine the real estate? Gerald would be uh, selling houses like hotcakes. It would be a high price, high profit margin, Gerald. Happy for you. That's the place where you want to sell, where everybody wants to be. Yeah, that's the way to go because everybody wants to live there. It's Karn of the Shezvasa. If you believe in Mashiach coming, you're going to move to that place, whatever it is now, modern day Iraq, wherever it is. You're going to want to move there. That's Karn of the That's Karn of the Shezvasa. End of the very first long line. Amar Rebbe Lazar, Mesim Shebuchutzars Enam Chaim. Yikes, Shem Yirachim. People who live in Futzars and they're buried here, Enam Chaim. They don't live, meaning there's no Tchias Amesim. And we'll we'll qualify this momentarily. Don't uh, don't don't give up quite yet. What does this pasuk mean? Eretz ba. If my if my focal point is on that land, then Mason Chaim. That's Eretz Yisrael. She ain't Sivioni ba. You live in America. You live in Chicago. Ain Mason Chaim. Then there's no Tchias Mason there. Says the Gemara. Wait one second. Masiv Rav Abba Bar Mamel. Yichyu Meisecha Navalti Yekumun. What does this pasuk mean? My love that when it says Yichyu Meisecha, that those who uh, who live. That the Mason will live, that's talking about Mason Sheb Eretz Yisrael. And about the Yekumun is Mason Sheb Chutzaretz. And we see Yekumun that they still will live. They, even in Chutzaretz, they will live. So the Gemara says, hold on one second. How do we understand this Pasuk? That Pasuk was talking about Anavuchad Netzar, strangely printed here as two different parts of his name, Nevuchad and Netzar. We don't spell it that way. We don't typically, even in Tanakh, it's not written that way, but here it is. The Pasuk is saying that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should protect us from this Malka de Kalil, this light-footed uh, leader. Nebuchadnezzar is referred to as a light-footed leader, Kitabia like a deer. So Amr like, Rabbi, don't worry, I have another Pasuk to answer this question, which is, Mikra Acher Anidorish, no sein neshama la'am, Says the Gemara, What do we do about the fact that it says Navalti Yakumun? Says the Gemara, and for those who've gone through these kinds of struggles, this should be a great comfort. If a couple ever goes through 
a stillbirth, a stillbirth or a, a child who passes away in utero, says the Gemara, they get trias amesim anywhere, anywhere. We all know people who've dealt with, uh, with a nafel, who've dealt with, with babies who passed away in utero, they are considered to be a slam dunk guarantee that they will get uh, trias amesim. Rabbi Abba Bar Mamel, hi, no sin What? What? I have not. Yeah. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> I mean, that's a, it's a requirement for babies who are born, even for adults. If there are adults who are Jewish but not from, and they've never been no, circumcised, they also need to get cut. Yeah. Um, I spoke to one of the guys in the Hebrew, they do it. They're, they're not focused on the artwork. They're just focused on making sure that he's gemalt before he gets buried. Um, so I've never, I've never gotten the call. I would do it if they asked me. I just know myself. It's not, that's not, I don't know. I don't know. So that's a lot. What about this pasuk? So the way he uses this pasuk is Wow, unbelievable! Not an Eved Ivri, it's an Eved Kananis. She is Zoche. She gets Olam Haba, and their Olam Haba doesn't compare to ours. Fine, but still, they're getting, it's a big guarantee. That's great. Uh, if there's ever a guy who wants to make Aliyah, they. Uh, they have a Gemara to support the cause. And move to Olam Haba. Says the Gemara, after all, how do we know that they get Olam Haba? And the Gemara makes a drasha. This is not the kind of drasha that we typically like to, uh, like to uh, advertise. <laughs> but the Gemara says, Am hadoma lechamor. Even a nation that isn't a Yiddish nation, they're doma lechamor. Fine, whatever the comparison is, not for now. But uh, that's uh, why we know that they get their move to Achlo Shaben Olam Haba. The pasuk says V'ruach laholchem ba. What does that mean? Amar Rabbi Yirmiyah bar Abba, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, famous Gemara. Kol amahalich arba amos beretz Yisrael move to Achlo Shaben Olam Haba. Then anyone who walks four amos in Eretz Yisrael, they're guaranteed to be Olam Haba. Don't take the taxi. Just walk. You get a lot of zechuyos, a lot of merits for just walking the land of Eretz Yisrael. Let's go back to what we said before that Rahman al Islam people buried here, but they don't have Tchias in it. Hamas, my brother's buried here. We want to make sure that he gets back to Eretz Yisrael when the time comes. So the Gemara says, don't worry. As we've heard before, that if from Chutzla are it's back to Eretz Yisrael, the bodies are able to roll. Uh, from here again, we don't know what that means. Is it literal? Is it conceptual? Unclear. Maskevler of Abba Sala Rab Rava. He says Gilgul le Tzadikim. Sorry, okay for the regular average Joe, no problem if they have to roll through the ground and it's uncomfortable. But lechol apachos they get to leave Chutz Laaretz and go to Eretz Yisrael. But for the Tzadikim, it's not right. And the Gemara says Amar Abayi Mechilos Naasos Bahem Bekarka. There are tunnels that are made. I'm waiting. I I'm waiting that. If you know there's any Yidden who are buried in a funny place, they're going to go through like the Palestinian dug tunnels. Like we're like, thank you very much, by the way, very appreciative. You made it tall enough and well lit and ventilated. I'll walk. You know, a little bit of a okay. Please God. The pasuk says 15, 12 lines from the bottom. These words are very difficult. Why? Because yeah, he knows where he was. He doesn't do any averas. He's not like us. I don't understand. Why do you have to be? Why do you have to be in Eretz Yisrael to die and to get buried? Why did you? Why did everybody have to stop to get you to Eretz Yisrael? Says the Gemara. Because you're right. You're right that there's Gilgal, but Shema lo yizkelemechilos. Not everybody was able to marry because you have to be a tzaddik kamor. Not everyone was able to merit the tunnels. So therefore, we have to make sure that I'm a tzaddik. Next, Kayotze Badavra Tomer. We have another pasuk by Yishbai Yosef. These words are also very difficult. So if so, why did he make them slap the bones? Don't worry, you'll roll. If what you're saying is that there's always going to be Gilgal, so what's the problem? Says the Gemara, why slap 400 parsa? The Gemara responds, and this is the top, top, top tier of people. So if we have an option, it's better to be buried in Eretz Yisrael. We have to take into to certain things into account. Finances, schlepping, the kids visiting, I got a whole bunch of things taken into account. From the Pashtas of the Gemara, it seems that it's preferred to be in Eretz Yisrael, even if you're a tzad, even if you're a tzad. There was a, uh, a person's brother was, uh, was asked to Shaila. He said to his brother, that Yaakov was a tzaddik gomer, yet he still moved to Eretz Yisrael. If that's true, you should move to Eretz Yisrael before you die. No one's as big of a tzaddik as Yaakov, or very few people, even though the Gemara elsewhere does enumerate the people who went through life without chait, 
fine. But still, the Gemara says, if Yaakov Afinu is moving to Eretz Yisrael to get buried here, you should come move to Eretz Yisrael, he says to the brother. And that's uh, the end of that Gemara. And Ilfa, Mosif Badvarim, the Gemara says there was a little bit added to the letter that the brother sent. There was a man who was crazed over a particular woman. He wanted to marry her. Totally horse blinders on, couldn't see couldn't see anything other than this one woman wanted to marry her. B.K. Shleri, but she lived in Chutzars. So he went and he asked a Shiloh and he wanted to move down to Chutzars to marry this woman, which we know is Mutter Ladina. We know that a person's allowed to marry, uh, allowed to move in order to marry. It says the Gemara, Kevan Shashama Kazos. But once he heard this Gemara about Yaakov, Yaakov, the great Sadik, who decided to move to Eretz Yisrael so that it, well, he could be buried in Eretz Yisrael without Gilgul and without having, having to worry about Mechilos, Gilgil be'atzma yom moso. He he just pushed off the marriage until he died. He never married the woman. He ended up staying single his whole life. And the Gemara says that afal pisha chacham gadol ata eno dome. Oh, sorry, that's the next line. Uh, so Gilgil be'atzma yom moso. He spent his whole life not being married to this woman. And in conclusion, that was where he died. Then says the Gemara afal pisha chacham gadol ata. Even though you're very wise, eno dome lo med me atzma lo med me rabo. It's great that you know how to learn. But there's no no comparison to learning from a Rebbe. It's just good to know in general. It's great that you know how to read a Mishnah Brura, but you always have to be asking Shav. So I was learning with my son tonight. We were discussing the halachos of making brachos in front of a woman who's not Sanua. So we were discussing if you have a girl who's 10, 11 years old, 8, 9, 10, they're, they're at the age of chinuch where they should be dressing somewhat properly. But the mice are there in a pair of short shorts. The thighs are showing and you want to make havdama. Does the din... Of quote uh, of quote of Shem Hashem with Baruch Atah Hashem, does that apply to a katana who's not yet dressed? I, I don't know. I don't. Know. I could look it up. I'm going to ask a shayla. But that's the point: is that we always have to be kafuk to a rav to make sure that we're getting that we're getting not only an answer, but we're getting a consistent set of answers from one person. That's how we pass on the Masora. The Masora today is at risk. We have one of the hardest generations of passing on a Masora because instead of being kafuk to a rav, so many kids are kafuk to their phones, and that's where they learn. Forget about halacha, halavai. Alavai, we would want our kids to be learning Shabur all the time. That would be beautiful. We have a much bigger, broader problem, which is that our Masora is at serious, serious risk. And if we as parents don't knock it out of the park, then the next generation could really struggle. It's not just about halacha. It's also about Masora. It's not just about, did my father polish his shoes with it? It's not just that. It's the big, big, big picture of the Masora, and it is at tremendous risk. It says the Gemara, four lines from the bottom, Yes, the Chorab, you're worried about not having a Rebbe, don't worry, when you move here, I'll get you a Rav. Manu, you can sit in Rav Yochanan, Shir, don't worry, I'll get you a seat. If you, my brother, are not going to move, then he's Arvish Lo Shadvarim, you need to be careful with three things. Al Tarba Yeshiva, don't sit for too many hours of the of the day. She Yeshiva Kashala Tachtonios, this causes for some issues uh, like hemorrhoids or some types of, of medical issues that come up. Al Tarba Be'amida, don't stand too long. Shamida Kashala Lev, standing is bad for your heart. I don't know what this Gemar means. I, I have no idea. It's probably better to stand than to sit. Like I would imagine. Having a balance. <clears throat> the Gemara will say that, but I, I think it's hard to argue that standing is bad. And that's what the Gemara says. The question is, what well, does it mean? Is, what? If your job is standing all day. Is there we have a Gemara. The question is, what does a Gemara mean? We have to look in the Rishonim and see what it means. That standing is bad for your heart. My, phone, my Apple Watch reminds me every few hours to stand up. It's not medically bad. Maybe the Gemara is speaking about shkafa. It's speaking in something spiritual. We have to figure it out. The Altar Behalicha, two lines from the bottom. You shouldn't walk too much. Halicha kasha le'inaim. It's bad for your eyes. Obviously, this Gemara is talking on a different level. This Gemara is not dealing with with doctors and medical issues and biology books. Uh, we've read the biology books, and these that's not what the biology books say. So obviously, a family tonight said to me, "Do you have to do mitzitzah?" So I said, "The Gemara says about mitzitzah that it's a sakana." And we don't know what that sakana really is from the Gemara itself. We don't mess with these things. There's something above our pay grade. So we're going to do Matitza. We can do it with a tube, whatever. But we're not ignoring the Matitza. The Gemara says there's a sakana. That conversation short. We're not messing around. She said to me, it's a whole controversy. I'm like, it's not really a controversy. You have to do Matitza. <laughs> How do you do it? I, the Matitza itself is not a controversy. It has to be done. Here too, these are Gemaras we don't understand. We don't understand. But when the Gemara says something... We have to understand that, uh, that there's something deeper going on there. Ella, rather, because of these concerns, how should a person split their time? A person should spend a third of their day sitting, a third of their day standing, and a third of their day walking. Says the Gemara, okay, well, hold on one second. Last line. The Gemara says, Kol yeshiva sheni masmicha. What if you're sitting down, but you don't have a back to your chair? You have nothing to support you. Says the Gemara, <laughs> Amida no You're better off standing under those circumstances. Rukhata Adonoi Elam Hain Balakha Lamsha Kwam Yabidwara. Amen.
The Gemara says, wait one second. You said standing is better than sitting without a chair, but standing was a problem. How can you say that? He says, standing is bad for your heart. What do you want to have problems with? You want to have problems with hemorrhoids? You want to have problems with your heart? I pick hemorrhoids. So says the Gemara, why, what are you even talking about here? The heart is a big issue. So how can you say stand instead of sit? Answers the Gemara, Eli, you're right. Yeshiva turning to the top of Kuf Yadala from a base. I know it's daunting. We're only going to learn two thirds of this page and then we're going to stop. And I have a meeting in 11 minutes. So here's hoping, but I don't know if that's going to happen. They'll have to wait. Says the Gemara, She'ein basmicha, that chair without a back, Amida she'yesh basmicha noche himena. Standing, but with a support, that is better. Standing without a support is worse. V'chein amru Yitzchak v'shimon ve'oshaya, these three people. Amru davar echad halacha ke Reb Yehuda b'prados, that we have a halacha that deals with animals. This Gemara seems to be very out of context. The Tanya, Reb Yehuda Omer, Parda, if there's a female animal, Shatava, that's interested in mating, she can only be intimate with an animal. She can only be mated with an animal that's the same exact kind of animal. This guy today, uh, the guy, the dog watcher, he said to me that his dogs that he sells start at $5,000 and go up. Purebred paperwork back to the 1800s on some of these dogs. Hafla Vafela, they have a better record than many Jews. They have a better paper trail, Nebuch, Hashem Rachim, on many Jews who don't even know if their grandparents were hidden. They have no clue. That's unbelievable. These dogs, 5,000 and up. What a Musser Haskell from a, from a puppy. 5,000 and up. They have a paper trail to the 1800s, and you don't know if your grandmother's Jewish. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. It's a crazy town. He didn't know what I was thinking when he said that. It just made me sad. That's all that happened. I'm like, oh, wow. $5,000 for a dog. We're not even sure how Jewish we are. I, I know we're Jewish. Thanks, Dad. Amar Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak. When we say Yitzchak, Zerub Yitzchak Nafcha. When we say Shimon, Zerub Shimon ben Pazi, or possibly Ba'amar Lo Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish is, of course, Rub Shimon ben Lakish. And when it says Oshai, Zerub Yitzchak Oshai Beribi. Amar Rav Lazar, Ame Aratzos Enam Chaim. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People who are Amaratzim, that's pretty bad for all of us because we're pretty much all Amaratzim. So it's a bit of a problem. It says the Gemara, Einam Chaim, which means there's no Tchiasa Mesim. Shinemar, how do we know? Mesim Bal Yichu. Tanya Nami Haki, the Bryce writes the same. Mesim Bal Yichu. Says the Gemara, Yachol, Hakol, every Amaratz. There's no Tchiasa Mesim for any Amaratz. Says the Gemara, Tamalom, Refaim Bal Yakuma. What does it mean, Refaim Bal Yakuma? Those who are weak will not rise. Bimar Pe Atmo, Medivir Torah, Kasim Dabra. We're sitting up in Steiging. We may be Amaratzim. But we're making a push. We're trying to get a little bit of a greater grasp of Torah. Givald, we're Amaratim who are trying. We get Tchias Amesim. Baruch Hashem. Says the Gemara, Malay Rav Yochanan, Lo Nicha Lemarayhu Da Amrasu. This is not the kind of thing that we want to say out loud. Da Amrayhu Lehu Lahachi. We need to re-understand this pasuk. Says the Gemara. Okay, when it says Refaim Bal Yakumu, what does it mean? It means Bemar Peatzmo Lavo Dazar. You weakened yourself to the point that you are dealing with Avod Dazar. Who dechsi? That's what the pasuk is talking. about. It's not about Talmud Torah. So therefore, the Gemara seems to imply from here that as long as you don't do Avod Dazar and you're an Amaret, you get Tchias Amesim. Okay. Omar Leis says, the Gemara, Mikra, Mikra Acher, and Nidorish, I have another Joshua, the Chsib, Kital Oros Talecha, the Eretz Refaim Tapil. Says the Gemara, Kital Oros Talecha, the Eretz Refaim Tapil. What does this mean? Kol Amishtamesh be Or HaTorah. This quote needs to be put on our refrigerators. Kol Amishtamesh be Or HaTorah. Anyone who utilizes the light of the Torah, Or HaTorah Mechayehu. That light of Torah, will keep you alive, it will sustain you. Sorry. And anyone who doesn't take advantage of the Or HaTorah, I have, thank you. I have, thank you very much. Then the Torah will, you, 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 can't, you can't become bright without lighting the candle. And that's our job. Our job isn't, uh, isn't to finish. Uh, every ounce of Torah, though, uh, we have a mitzvah say according to some Rishonim, to finish Shas, and we're well underway, almost halfway done, Bar Hashem. But the Gemara says here, if we are chipping away a little bit of learning every day, adding a Seder, trying to learn, hopping a Ryan, Rabbi Robinson has said this many times, that when the Gemara Masech Shabbos says, I have six questions to ask you, and one of, this, one of, them, one of the questions was, are you Kovei Itim Torah? He says the word Koveya doesn't mean to set a time. It means to steal time. When you, this is the litmus test of a person's brain. When you have 10 minutes, what do you do with those 10 minutes? Flipping on your phone, being with your kids, learning Torah. That is an awesome litmus test. If it's flipping on the phone, you've lost. <laughs> if it's your kids, you have a shot. And if it's Torah, you're doing great. <laughs> so the Gemara here is telling us we need to make sure that we anchor ourselves in Talmud Torah. 
So still, this answer wasn't stark enough because it, it left a lot of Amaratim in the dark about Tchiyas Amesim. Kevin the Chazid, the Kamitzar. Amalei, Rebbe, don't worry, I have another Pasuk. Matsasi lohen takana mina Torah. I found a way to fix these things, this issue for the Amaratim. The Pasuk says, Says the Gemara, there's just a Metzias. What does Dvekus with the Kodesh Baruch Hu mean? Third of the way down, V'chiyev shel edvuke b'shechina. Uh, you can understand, yeah, you, you could build an awesome bond with your wife. Got it, I understand. Says the Gemara, how can you have a dvekus with the Shechina? Ki Hashem elokecha ish ochla. Kodesh Baruch Hu is fire and he'll consume you. Ella, what, what must it be that the Pasuk says that there's dvekus? If you're an Am Haaretz, marry your daughter to a Talmud Chacham. And then also says the Gemara, we do business to a Talmud Chacham. If we give of our properties to a Talmud Chacham, so that's what an Am Ha'aretz should do. We should make sure that much as we are Amaratim to a great degree, even though we're the ones who are trying, we're pushing, we're motivated, we should try and marry off our daughters to Tamir Chachamim and our sons, to women who support the study of Torah. Love Tafka Kola. I'm not saying uh, Kola Lev. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that we're supporting Torah. And Kayote Badavar Ata Omer, we have a similar Marimakom about Batam Advekim. The Pasuk says, The Abbas Hashem Elokechel Dav Kabob, Chayafshar La Adam Lidabek Bishkina. Same exact question. Ella, same exact thing. What does it mean that we have to love a Kodesh Baruch Hu and, and cling to him? Kola Masi Bito Lataman Chacham, Chacham, Vose Prakma Yelatam and Chacham, Vahamahan and Batamid Chacham and Minachasov, Mala Lava Kasu Kilim Dabek Bishkina. The way that we can show a Kaddish Baruch Hu that we're committed is by marrying off our children to those who support Talmud Torah. Soon the righteous will sprout forth from the ground in Yerushalayim. They will grow from the ground like a blade, like a blade of grass. They will spring from the city like a blade in the land. We know that an ear, the reference of ear, in, in anonymity, when it's just used in, in our stra- in it, on its own, Shenemar Veganosi El Ihir Hazos, of course, referring to Eretz Yisrael and to Shalim. Vam Rebchia, halfway down, six lines before the very wide lines. Rebchia says, Rebchia Bar Yosef says, Asidim Sadikim Shamdu Mavoshein. When they come out of the ground, they're going to be fully clothed. To the nines, they're going to be dressed perfectly. How do we know? Kabachom Machita. Machita, just like when we take a grain of wheat, Shinik Bura Aruma, we put it in the ground, no chaff, just the seed itself. And Yotze become a Levushin. And when it comes out of the ground, it has the grain, it has the chaff, it has the covering, all the different pieces that uh, we know exist in regards to the wheat. Tzadikim Shinik Rubil Vushayim. We don't, we don't bury people undressed, we put them in Tachrichen. So then the Gemara says, Allah has Kama become all the more so. And then the Gemara says, last five lines for the night, Brahma Rabchia Bar Yosef, Asi the Ertzi Shal Shatotzi Gluskos Melas, that Eretz Yisrael is going to produce baked goods and fine flour and fine wool, excuse me. Shanamar, the Pasuk says, Yehei Pisas Bar Haaretz, and Pisas is uh, this language, it's a hard word to translate right here, but basically it's a reference to these things which are baked goods and fine wool. Tanu Rabban, and the Pasuk says, Yehei Pisas Bar Haaretz Barosh Harim, which one is it? Is it in the Aretz or is it in the Harim? Is this fine wool going to be on the ground or is it up in the in the mountains? Amr, they said, Asi the Chita Shetatamir Kedekel, that the, the, uh, the stalks of wheat are going to grow very tall, just like a Dekel tree. Could you imagine? If you've ever dri- driven through anywhere in southern Illinois, there's a wheat fields and corn fields. The wheat is gorgeous, but it only grows to two, three, four feet. You're talking about a tree which is 60, 70 feet. Mehechatesi says the Gemara. Oh, does that mean? Sorry. Okay. It says the Gemara, what does it mean it's going to grow very tall? So difficult to harvest such a tall piece of wheat. You're going to say timber every time you cut down a stalk of, of wheat. It's a very tedious job. There's thousands of uh, thousands of stalks. So says the Gemara, there's going to be a noise in Lebanon about its fruits. He's going to bring a wind from his storage house and it's going to blow on the wheat. And it's going to drop the flower from the top. He's going to go out into the field and maybe male pisas yado. And he's going to be able to take the flower. All of this is derech neis. The Gemara then says, um, uh, it says that the, the chita is going to be like uh, kilayos, like it's going to be like kidneys. That's very large. And don't ask any questions on the size of this. There was an animal, a shual, a fox that was 
burrowing inside of a lefes, inside of a particular vegetable. Vishaklu, <laughs> they took it and they waited. And they found a massive size of something that should have been very small. We're going to see there's going to be fruits and vegetables that are well beyond their size. Baruch Hashem, we finished for today, two thirds of the way down, four lines into the wide lines of the word. Tanya will pick up tomorrow to finish off. Um, and um, uh, tomorrow we'll have a seum as well. Special thank you to Rabbi Yaman for sponsoring. Um, Rabbi Yitz is going to take care of all the foods. Uh, Rabbi Yitz, we need yashan rolls for tomorrow. Uh, if you don't mind, our, thank you very much. If you need me to get them, let me know. Otherwise, we're done. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Oh,